Let's consider a, another example of arranging distinct objects, in this case using an ideal block cipher. So what we have is we have some plain text as input and uh, we want to encrypt that plain text. We take a key which tells us how to take the input plain text and applying the encryption algorithm produce some, produce some ciphertext. So for an example, let's say we have a plain text which is two bits in length. A very simple example. And with the block cipher it produces ciphertext which is also two bits. We want to know with an ideal block cipher how many possible keys are there. Let's consider that. With a two bit plain text there are four possible plain text inputs. We could have input of 00, 01, 10, or 11. One, one. And when we encrypt, we take a key and it takes a plain text input and produces a ciphertext output. And the output should be a reversible mapping in that the ciphertext, if we have 00, zero input and or one of the other three inputs, then the ciphertext should be unique. So one possible arrangement is that if we have Zero, 00 is input, then the output with a particular key is also 00. zero. That's not so very not very good encryption, but let's consider this case. And another and if we have 0, 01 as input plain text, it produces 0, 01 as ciphertext. If it takes 10 as plain text, 10 as ciphertext, 11 one produces 11. One one. So that's one possible arrangement. If we use a key, we in fact don't do anything. Not good encryption, but it's possible. Another case would be that if we have 00, zero as plain text and we used a different key, we'd get a different arrangement of ciphertext. For example, 0, 01 here, 00, 10, zero, one, zero, one, one. That's using a second key. Or if we used a third key, we could get a different arrangement of the ciphertext. For example, if 0, 01 is the input plain text, using the third key, the ciphertext may be 10. Using 0, 01 as input plain text with a third key, maybe we get 11 one as output ciphertext. And the 10 zero becomes 00, zero, and 11 one becomes 0, 01 if we use the third key. The question is, how many possible keys are there in this case? Well, all we're doing really is rearranging these uh, distinct four values. So when we have four values, the number of arrangements that we have, we will not write them all, is four factorial, or 24. That is, there are 24 possible keys for this ideal block cipher. We take two bits input. This output ciphertext depends upon which key we use. If the two bits input is 0, 01 and we use the third key, then the output ciphertext is 11. One, one. So we have 24 possible keys with this ideal block cipher or 4 factorial. Let's try that, but with different values. For example, uh, more realistic, an ideal, uh, a block cipher that takes 64 bits input and produces a 64-bit ciphertext. How many possible plain text inputs are there? Well, 2 to the power of 64. We will not, of course, try to list them. In our previous example, we had two bits input. There are two to the power of two possible plain texts. Now we have 64 bits input. There are two to the power of 64 possible plain text messages. And there are two to the power of 64 uh, ciphertexts that will come out. How many arrangement of arrangements of those ciphertexts? And therefore, how many possible keys with an ideal block cipher? It's 2 to the power of 64 factorial. 
which is a very big number. It turns out it's approximately 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 88. Maybe look up on the uh, Wolfram Alpha to calculate that one. So with an ideal block cipher with such a, with a typical block size of 64 bits, there are in fact six, 2 to the power of 64 factorial possible keys. And that uh, illustrates one of the problems with ideal block ciphers in that the key size is and the key length is not manageable.